Hi everyone, my name is Zach Silverstein. Today I'm going to be running you through the template bot creation uh, within IBM RPA. Now within this demo, what we're going to do is we're going to use IBM RPA to automate the filling out of an item provision template or an item provision document uh, utilizing Microsoft Word. We get that information from a report daily dump CSV list. Right, so let's go ahead and look at some of our items uh, just to set the stage. So here is our report daily dump of information. We have our information come in a comma separated list where we have the parameter name and then the parameter value. So it's in a name value pair uh, object. We have that in, a, in this CSV file. So we can see we have item name, item SKU, quantity requested, requester, expected cost, fulfillment date and date. So now that we have these pieces of information, let's go ahead and look at what a item provision template might look like. So we'll open it up inside Microsoft Word and we'll see this item provision template. Now right now we already have objects representing wherever we want the variable to be inserted. Uh, here you can see it's caret, the variable name, and then n caret, and that aligns specifically, oops, that aligns specifically with our, uh, that aligns specifically with our report daily dump fields. So we have item name, and that matches item name, item SKU matching item SKU. Now, of course, these templates aren't going to be automatically created for you. Usually what uh, I would do uh, is I would take a actual filled out item, and then we would just replace whatever we want with the variable names. So whenever our automation picks it up, what our bot will do is our bot will essentially open up this uh, document, this template. Our bot will click the replace button. It will enter a caret, the variable name, and then an end caret, enter the replace with value, click the replace all button, click a yes value or a no value or some sort of interaction with this field. So we'll, we'll just click no for now. Close out of the window, save this document as a new uh, templated object based off the date, so create a unique save as name, and then close out of the template. So that is our end-to-end -end process. And uh, now we can go ahead and start looking at IBM RPA. So now that we have started our studio, we can begin building out our automation. So the first thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to do some of our initialization components. That's going to be uh, reading the base CSV, and it's going to be opening up our Microsoft Word file. So let's go ahead and pull a read CSV command. So I search read, and I can see in my palette all the uh, selection options, or in my toolbox all the selection options, I'm going to drag read CSV file. Now I select my file selection helper and I can designate the specific file that I'd like. So that's that report daily dump comma separated list. I'm going to select it. Now remember what the data values were is that there actually were no headers. So I want to deselect the has headers field and I'm good with my comma separated delimiter because it is a CSV. Now I'd like to create a data table so I'll just use uh, some uh, uh, the built-in wizard to automatically create my data table. So I'll just call it VDT for variable data table. And I put down my output and I click save. And what we'll see is it automatically creates that variable because it is in the output field. We're automatically able to create it. So now my bot has read the CSV file. Now let's go ahead and just throw a log message command in to see what it looks like. So I will select that, hitting control space to auto-populate my variables. I'll select my data table variable, and I'll go ahead and have that as a log message. I'll click start, and we will see it read that comma-separated list, and we'll see that appear in my output object. Now, I can also uh, put my debugger, and I'll have the ability to actually stop on it, where my uh, debugger will stop on it, and it will appear in my global variables tab where I click window global variables so it'll appear over here on the right and I can inspect it and see okay here's the values in the column 0 column 1 format so this is our first row or this is our first column and this is our second column 
So now that I have all of these relevant information read into the system, I want to go ahead and open up Microsoft Word. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. I'll close out of my debugger. We'll delete that log message command and I'll clear out my log. So what I want to do now is I want to use the run command. So I'll search run and we'll scroll down a little bit and at the bottom we have a system command for Windows to run a item. So I'll go ahead and click that file selection helper again and all I want to do is designate that item provision template. So when I click save it's going to run that and open it up. So let's go ahead and click uh, start just to see that happen. So I click start we see Microsoft takes a couple seconds to load and then it takes me to this home page. Fantastic. So now that we have that, that component done of the automation, I'm going to close out Microsoft Word and we can begin adding our logic for actually reading through each of the individual rows within our comma separated list and then essentially clicking that replace button and doing it programmatically. So the first thing I want to do is just for consistency sake, we'll put a delay in here. I'm going to put a, a five second delay um, for a 5,000 timeout, 5,000 millisecond timeout. We could do this in a number of different matters, wait, manners, waiting for the window to appear or uh, identifying some other element. But for now, I'll just simply do a, a five second delay. So now that we have that five second delay, what I now want to do is I want to loop through each of those rows within our data table. So let's go ahead and pull up a for command. We're going to pull our for loop and we're going to drop that right in. And we'll see that it wants a variable parameter. Now this variable input parameter is going to be our index. What loops from one to n or what loops from uh, a to b. So I don't have a variable auto created. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click select a variable. I'll click this add new variable and it automatically knows that it must be of number type and it pre-creates that. So I'll just call this V index. I click save, it automatically creates that and inputs that variable within. Fantastic. So now I want to loop through the rows from row one, our first row with IBM RPA, we start with a base of uh, one. So we, we loop through row one. And we wanna go all the way through the data table. Well, because we don't know that right away, luckily my variable has a parameter for that. So I'll hold control, click space, and we see my V data table pop up. We see there's a triangle at the end of this data table, and that has our item properties. I click that, and I want to get all of the rows. So we click save, and my bot is going to loop through all of the rows from the first row to the last row by one row at a time. So now that we have that, we want to make sure and map each of the values from the row. So let's go ahead and pull a map table row command from our data table component. And we're just going to drop that right in. So here we'll select our data table, VDT. We'll select our row and our row is actually going to be that index. And then we bind our desired mappings. So now if we were to think about that data uh, within the CSV, the first column is going to be the, uh, our first column is going to be our field name and our second column is going to be whatever template variable we want to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in those values. Now how I would do this is I need to create a variable to bind those two. So I click select variable, I'll click add new variable, and we'll call this first one the field name. I click save and it's going to automatically create that. Then we will do V, uh, let's do V temp value for template value or temporary value. So now we have both of those fields. So whatever our, our first item is, is going to be our field name. Our second item is going to be the template value. So let's go ahead and pull our log message command. And we'll go ahead and pull that. We'll drop that right in and let's see what our value is. So we'll have field name colon the temporary value or template value. We'll click save and I want to save my script. So in template bot creation, we'll just call this um, template bot. We save it and let's click start and see what happens. So our bot opens up Microsoft Word 
and then it does some action, and then it stops. So let's go ahead and look at our log message. We can see we pulled all of the parameters in the right manner. So let's go ahead and close out Microsoft Word. And we can start with the next step of our automation. So I'm going to close out Microsoft Word. And let's delete that log message command. So let's go ahead and create a subroutine, a repeatable function, to bind each of the template var values and variables and then replace them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to click this new routine. A subroutine essentially acts as a reusable function within a script. So I'll create this subroutine. And let's go ahead and call this subroutine um, bind template value. We'll make it easy. All right, so we'll call it bind template value. I click save and it automatically is going to create that subroutine. So if I were to click this little X, it takes us back to the main. I have a nice little drop down to hop into that subroutine. So let's go ahead and look at our script just to see what that looks like from a uh, text level from a script level. And we can see the parameters of uh, all of the parameters for our variables and commands. We can see our subroutine at the end there. Great. So now, uh, let's think about our subroutine. Well, within our subroutine, we want to pass in a matching string to search for within that Microsoft Word document. We want to pass in a replacement string, which is going to be that uh, template variable. So let's go ahead and pull a subroutine command. So I'll search sub for subroutine. And let's pull the run subroutine command. So we pull that in, and all I have to do is select this little dropdown, and it identifies that, that subroutine. I'm going to create two assignments here. Our first assignment is going to be for our variable uh, for a matching string, right? Our, our find parameter. So we'll call that the match string. Our second parameter is going to be for, we'll call it the replacement string. So we'll call it the replace string. The replace string. And those are the values we want to take in. So for our matching string, what do we want to bind to it? We don't want to just bind the field name. We want to bind the field name with the carrots involved. Because when we look back at our Microsoft Word document, let's go ahead and go here. I'll navigate to it. So when we go ahead and look at our Microsoft Word document, well, we can see it's not just the word item name that we want to replace, but item name with the carrots on both end, ends. So let's minimize that. And I will put my left carrot, and I'll do control space, and then let's go ahead and say that'll be our field name. Ooh, you know, it overwrites, so what I'll do is I'll just paste it first. And then I'll put my little caret. So we find the field name. And then our replacement string, we want to replace it with whatever that direct value is. So I just bind it in, and I click Save. And what we'll see is it doesn't work right away. Why doesn't it work? It's a nice-to-have feature that tells us, hey, we're actually missing these two objects that it binds to. So all I have to do is go in here and I can create them and uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I will create my vmatch string. So I'll just call it vmatch string. I click save and uh, we don't want it to bind to the actual variable value so I'm just using that as a little shortcut. So I'm just going to remove the uh, reference because we don't want to uh, capture it by reference. We want to capture it by the name of the object for the assignment. So I'm going to do the same for our replace string. So we'll do v replace string, and we're going to click save, and it's going to bind it once again to the reference of the value instead of the actual name. So I just delete that, I click save, and now it is able to pull that information. All right. So whenever we find our field name, we want to assign it to the match string with the carrots on each side. Whenever we find the template value, we want to assign it to the, our replacement string. So let's go ahead and hop into our automation, or hop into our subroutine. So within our subroutine, we want to take a couple of different tasks. Those tasks are going to be uh, identifying the Microsoft Word window, clicking on the Replace button, finding a pop-up, clicking the values into the pop-up, or setting the values within the pop-up, clicking on that pop-up, and then we want to uh, finally replace all the values and make it a, a nice smooth loop. So let's go ahead and start our recorder. So now that we have our recorder up, what I want to do is I want to open up my Microsoft Word document. I'm just going to hold on my left control. 
and we'll see that it highlights the item. So now with the recorder open, we've highlighted the item. Our recorder knows what application we want to associate it with. So let's go ahead and do a find window. We can see it automatically captures the name of the window, some of the information to find it behind the scenes. So that's a nice ease of use feature, quality of life feature. Let's go ahead and bind this window. Uh, we'll call it the vbase word window. We're just going to call it that and let's, uh, let's save it. So now our, our RPA software has found the window of Microsoft Word. So we know our recorder actions are going to take place on this Microsoft Word application. Well, the first thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and click on that replace button. So I hold my left control and what you'll see is it highlights that element. We can also go up here and view the DOM tree of the object model tree. We can see all the parameters we have. We can explore it manually however we want. So here, I'm going to right click on it, I'll select actions, and we want to click on that item. Let's go ahead and we'll click by name, right? That replace name, we think that it is unique enough. We'll go ahead and we'll say, okay, we wanna click on that replace name, but let's have it simulate human. We wanna click as if the human were to uh, connect with it. And that simulate human, depending on application, is something you might toggle to make sure that your uh, automation commands are read correctly if they are going too fast for the system to recognize or the system requires it to emulate the actual clicking of the item. So let's go ahead and click save and see what happens. So we click save and it pops up. So that means we've registered it successfully. Great. Well, what we can't forget is that this is actually a different window than the Microsoft Word document. So let's go ahead and hold control over this find and replace window. We want to click window and this time let's go ahead and find that window again. So we click find window, it happens instantly. We're able to get capture that title, the class name, the process name, some of those really highly relevant parameters. Now because this pops up within the other application, I might select a flag, we'll just make this recursive and let's go ahead and bind this window to our automation. So we'll call this vfind and replace window. Very straightforward. So I click save here and our automation now will read and find that find and replace window. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to start setting some values. So once again I'll hold control and we'll click actions at the top but we don't want to click here we want to set the value. So let's go ahead and use xpath just to switch it up a little bit. So I'll select xpath we can see we have our, our wizard pre-fill out, pre-identify that xpath. Let's just go ahead and bind our vmatch string object to it. So we'll call this our vmatch string. And uh, now that we have that, if we think that we're ready to go, we'll click save and we can look and it actually pastes uh, a variable object representation. Great, we know we're along the right track. We'll go ahead and do the exact same with our replace with field. So I click actions, I click set value, we'll use xpath, we'll keep it simple. And then within this set value field, this time we're going to do it with the replace string. So I have replace uh, and we are good to go. So we go ahead and click save. We can see that it, it loads in, fantastic. Well, now we want to click a button. We want to click that replace all button. So let's just go ahead and hold left control. That replace all pops up. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a click on it. And for this one, um, let's go ahead and use the name selector. We'll go back a little bit to show how we can go back and forth between a few. So we have that name selector. We have the replace all. Um, for this one, let's go ahead and do a simulate human. So it will click as if it were a human and we click save, and we see all done, we made zero replacements. Now if we think about this automation, we know that, that technically this pop-up might take a little bit of time to find, right? It, it might take a second if, let's say you had 100 replacements. So let's do our find window in a little bit different of a way. We're going to highlight the element, we're going to click window up top, and instead of find window, Let's go ahead and do wait for window to appear. 
Now once again we'll see very similar types of uh, interaction with it. It'll find that element. We'll go ahead and we'll mark it as recursive. We want to keep searching that top level. Let's call this vFind and replace alert window. So we're going to pass in different parameters. I click save. So the assumption is our bot now knows we're talking about this item. Well, let's go ahead and close that window. So we'll hold left control again. We'll identify that button, that click. Let's click actions. We'll want to click on that. Let's do XPath uh, to hop back. So we're going to click with XPath. And for this one, let's go ahead and simulate human as well. I like to interact with buttons with the simulate human command. So let's click save and see what happens. It goes away. So that means our automation was able to click it. So now let's, uh, let's go ahead and think, well, how do we close this find and replace window? Because there are going to be some other actions we'll, we'll need to take. Well, the, the easiest way would be for us to just go ahead and click the close button. But remember, our last context was the previous find and alert or find uh, find and replace alert window. So we want to now designate it to just the find and replace window. So we're going to go back up to our window command. We click attach window and then let's go ahead and designate our variable. So we'll just call this the find and replace window. Oh, had my recorder up, so of course it's still recording. And I click save. So now our bot knows, okay, we're looking back at this find and replace window, and we want to click that close button. All I have to do is highlight it once again by holding left control. I click actions, I click XPath, and then let's go ahead and click on that item. I click save, it goes away. So now let's close out of our recorder and look at the commands we have. So we have all these commands and our recorder automatically wrote them into our bot. We'll go ahead and we'll save our bot and let's go back to the top level and then run it. So we're navigating back up to the top level. We'll fold up all of our variables. We have our subroutine, so we expect our bot to read the CSV, run the Windows application, wait five seconds, loop through each of the rows, bind the rows within our Word document. So let's close out of our Word document, start fresh, click run, and see what happens. All right, so we click start, and let's see. Our automation runs. It's going to take a moment, right? Wait those five seconds. It's going to click that replace. It makes that replacement, and we're automating and iterating through each of the action items we can see our bot is doing a great job of doing that very efficiently, very quickly, and there's no human intervention other than these couple of minutes we use to build out our automation. So now that we're finished, realistically what a user would do is they would want to save that item, right? They want to save as, provide some information around it. So let's go ahead and navigate back to our development uh, studio, development environment. I'll close out of our recorder. And let's go ahead and we'll do some key presses, right? Let's go ahead and make it easy with some key presses to automate these tasks, just to show the variety of what we can do. So I'll search key. We see a variety of different commands. We want to press or release a key. So on Microsoft Word, the shortcut is F12 for the save button, or save as. So we want to press that, and we don't want to press and hold, we just want to press it. So I'll do the uh, F12 command. So if I were to go back to our item provision template, and we were to hit F12, let's go ahead and see if I can do it on my keyboard. Yep, we hit F12, it opens this up. So now all we really want to do is we want to type in a new file name, we want to then uh, hit the return key to save, and that is it. So we want to then close, or excuse me, change our item provision template. So I'm going to cancel out of this. I'll even close out of this because we don't need it anymore. We know what we want to do, and we want to get a couple of different items. So the first thing I want to do is maybe I want to use uh, the current date time. 
right? So let me pull, I'll pull get for get current date time. I'm just going to drag that command in. We'll go ahead and get that local time. We'll bind that to a the date time object. I click save and we now get that current date time. But a date time is not a string. It is a, a system representation of the date time. So now what we want to do is we want to convert that date time to text. So we'll find a convert date time to text command. We drag it in. I'll select my object. Let's do a simple custom format of month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. And then we'll bind that to an output variable of the date time string. I click save. And now we know that we're converting the date time string. So next component we want to do is we want to type that into our that pop-up, right? That save pop-up. And if we've already pressed F12, it automatically highlights it. So all we want to do is we'll pull in a type text command. We'll do control space here. And we'll do that date time string. But that's just going to pull in the date time string. We might want to provide a little bit of a, a pre-header to it or some other identifier other than just a string of the month, month, day, day, year, 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 year uh, format. So here, Let's go ahead and we'll just call this, um, we'll call this uh, item, uh, item document. So we'll say item document and then the, that format that we have previously defined. We click save and now we're going to type that and the last thing we want the user to do or we want the automation to do is to hit that return key. So we're going to go once again up to our press or release, so I'll search press we pull our press or release key, then we want to press that return key. And that's going to save as our document with, the, with that specific format we talk about. Well, fantastic. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to close out of our, our automation, right? Or close out of our window. We will handle that in a bit. Let's go ahead and click start and see what happens. So our bot opens up. It's going to start doing our find and replace actions. So it iterates through all of the action items. On requester now, we filled out the requester for our provision request. Filling out our date, the last item. And then we automatically have actually already saved as, and what you'll see is the name has changed. And if we navigate to that folder that we're in, it's automatically created that entry. So we have created our bot end to end that creates all of these items. Now the last thing we would do is we would end a simple command just to close out of this Microsoft Word application. And there are a variety of different ways. Uh, just for the, the sake of time, I'll pull a uh, close command we can see that we have a closed window. We're just going to go ahead and bind that to our base Word window application. So at the very end, we close that base application. And it's truly as simple as that. That is all we need to do to finish our automation.